I welcome the delegation of the Francis Ledwich Museum in Slain, where Francis was born and where his name and work has been remembered for a very long time. I welcome writer in residence of City Books Ypres, Irish novelist, playwright and poet Dermot Bauger, who published 25 years ago the first selected poem, poems of Francis Edwidge. I also welcome our good friend Ambassador Iman Makaoda, who is present here for his final official representation of Ireland in Belgium tonight. I welcome members of the Ledwich family from the municipality of Slain and the county Mef, the communities where he came from and where he was never forget. I welcome the ex-servicemen of Ireland who have come to commemorate a former brother in arms. And I welcome, last but not least, Ms. Mayet McGuinness, Vice President of the European Parliament in Brussels and Strasbourg. The presence of you all here in this cemetery tonight means that Francis Ledwich has not only become an important figure for Flanders and for Ireland, but indeed also for the whole of the European Union. Francis Ledwich imagined his death and he imagined it as happening peacefully in Slain. He spoke of his death in a melancholy but serene way. And my hands be crossed under the flowers I loved. But of course this was not to be. There would be no dignified ritual of death. No ceremony of passing. No dignified crossing of Francis's hands in his own place under the flowers that he loved. A soldier's grave. Then, in the lull of midnight, gentle arms lifted him slowly down the slopes of death. Left he should hear again the mad alarms of battle, dying moans and painful breath. And where the earth was soft for him, we made a grave that he might better rest. So spring shall come and bring its sweet arrayed, and there the lark shall turn her dewy nest. Irish funerals are huge communal events. People come from miles to commiserate and celebrate. No neighbour could be present when Frank's shattered limbs were buried in the crater caused by the stray shell that took his life a century ago. Likewise, no neighbours were here in 1919 when his limbs were reinterred in the cemetery. So, in one sense, today is like his Mead funeral, a chance for Mead people to finally pay their respect because neighbours remain neighbours even a century later. Because Francis never came back to us, we come here to him today, from the places in Mead where he loved and the Flemish village he died among, when posting his last poems on scraps of paper imbued with mud, Francis surely wondered if they would ever reach the sanctuary of home and be heard. Rest of peace, Francis. Not only did they reach and touch us, but a century on, we still carry them for you in our hearts. Thank you.
Oni. Radiga. Sus! The one who comes now and then. When you come in, it seems a brighter fire, crackles upon the hearth invitingly. The household routine, which was wont to tire, grows full of novelty. You sit upon our home upholstered chair and talk of matters wonderful and strange, of books and travel, customs old which dare the gods of time and change. Till we, within a word, our care refute, laughing that this our bosoms yet assails. While there are maidens dancing to a flute in the Andalusian vales. And sometimes from my shelf of poems you take, and secret meanings to our hearts disclose. As when the winds of June, the midbush shake, we see the hidden rose. And when the shadows muster, and each tree, a moment flutters, full of shutting wings, you take the fiddle and mysteriously wake wander with the strings. And in my garden, grey with misty flowers, low echoes fainter than a beetle's horn, fill all the corners with it, like sweet showers of bells in the owl's morn. Come often, friend, with welcome and surprise. We'll greet you from the sea or from the town. Come when you like, and from whatever skies, above you smile or frown. And here, where that sweet poet sleeps, I hear the songs he left unsung. When winds are fluttering the flowers, and summer bells are rung. From When I was young, I had a care, lest I should cheat me of my share of that which makes it sweet to strive, for life and dying still survive. A name in sunshine, written higher than lark or poet dare aspire. But I grew weary doing well, besides was sweeter in that hell, down with the loud banditti people who robbed the orchards, climbed the steeple for jackdaw's eggs, made the cock crow ere twas daylight on the clock. I was so very bad the neighbours spoke of me at their daily labours. Now I'm drinking wine in France, the helpless child of circumstance. Tomorrow will be loud with war. How will I be accounted for? It's too late now to retrieve a fallen dream. Too late to grieve a name unmade. But not too late to thank the gods for what is great. A keen-edged sword, a soldier's heart is greater than a poet's art and greater than a poet's fame a little grave that has no name whence honour turns away in shame